Hi everybody, I'm Sam. If you hear noises in the background, I'm watching um, Matilda. I'm sure I remember. Um, this is the TBR for May. Um, so I'll just get to that, I guess. Um, right now though, I am reading of trade and. I'm on, I don't know what page I'm on. It says, I don't know whether it's 82 or 83. I have to look at that one again. Um. Okay. I'm going to read Early Sunday Morning, The Pearl Harbor Diary of Amber Billows, Hawaii, 1941. Uh, it's one of the Dear America books. Uh, sometimes I run upon the... And these are rare to find, too. I've always found the hard ones and stuff, but nope, this is a paperback. Let me see. Sunday, December 7th, 1941. At first I thought I was still dreaming. I heard an in incessant droning like the sound of China clippers. Propellers made only much louder, more high-pitched. There were hundreds of planes in the sky. They were coming in unbelievably low, barely clearing the treetops, circling in the sky, and then peeling off, forming a smaller group, sm sm forming smaller groups of four and five. It's Pearl Harbor. It's Pearl Harbor. Andy was screaming. He was pointing to the column of black smoke. There, uh, sm black smoke that was rising up in the skies above Pearl Harbor. The smoke was mixing with the rays of the early morning sun, creating an eerie blood red sky. Mm. It shows pictures in this one, too. Mm. It shows pictures like Pearl Harbor. Can't wait to get to this one. Then I'm going to read. Oh wait, who wrote that one? Give me a minute. Oh, uh, I just forgot about who wrote it. Barry Din Dinenberg. I'm going to read um, Deadly Secrets by M. William Phelps. I know I've read more about him. Yep. Perfect poison. I'll be watching you because you left the tag on it. Hmm. I wonder what if looks would kill would. Hmm. I think I had murder in the heartland, but I lost it. Um. It began as a sordid affair and ended in bloody murder. Behind a veil of tranquility in the lovely town of Pleasant Valley in upstate New York, the maple trees were ablaze with fall's blood red color, the air was crisp, and a woman named Susan Fassett left her weekly chore, oh, sorry, choir practice at a church when a killer emerged from the shadows and mercilessly gunned her down. Behind a veil of tranquility. Okay. Was a realm of sexual deprava depravity where murder was the last sin. Stunned, the police immediately suspected suspected Susan Fassett's husband and surrounded his home. They couldn't have been more wrong. Susan Fassett had been leaving a secret life, lost in a world of dominance, lesbian sex, betrayal, and depraved plan for murder. After detectives untangled a web of secrets and corruption hidden hidden in plain sight, the town of Pleasant Valley would be rocked again with a with, when a shocking trial exposed the whole sordid truth. <clears throat> Sixteen pages of shocking photos. I don't remember this one. Give me a minute. I think this is one of them that the shocking photos isn't really shocking.
Yeah. <sighs> I think it was, um, I want to make sure if I'm getting the right person. She was the one that was killed in the middle. Poor woman. Um, okay. I know this is taking a while, sorry. She kind of woke up a little bit. Just give me one minute. Then planning on reading. Murder at the office. A twisted outcast with a deadly agenda and two loaded guns. I'm mistaken, I think. Man, I wish I could get these other ones. Oh. Definitely want smoldering embers and shattered bonds, but I don't think it's the same person. No. I think if I'm mistaken, it's what really happened to the author Brent C. Doonan. Doonan. Um, I think it's actually happened to him. I'm trying to remember here. Yeah. This is a thing that actually happened to him. Um, dot com boom. Young, smart, and driven by the lure of easy money, Mark Barton was hell-bent on raking it in during the internet boom. A hotshot day trader with dreams as big as the chip on his shoulder, Barton's star shined bright at Brent Doonan's bustling Atlanta Alltech Investment Group. Dot-com bust. But the only thing fortune handed Barton was spiraling debt, so he jumped ship for Monumentum Securities, the rival investment firm across the street. When his debt worsened and peaked at six, fi six figures, the decided, oh, he decided to disappear without a trace. If only he'd stayed gone. Bang, bang, bang. Except that he wanted to repay his debts in blood. With two guns cocked, Barton walked through the doors of Monumentum and fired, killing four and wounding seven. Then he crossed the street to see his old friend Brent Doonan, shooting him four times before killing five others. Miraculously, Brent survived. The deadliest workplace crime ever. This is his chilling story. And this one just says eight pages of revealing photos. Then I'm going to read Push by Sapphire. Are you being smart with me? Precious Jones, an illiterate, an illiterate 16 year old, has up until now been invisible. Invisible to the father who rapes her and the mother who batters her and the authorities who dismiss her as just one more of Harlem's casualties. But when Precious, pregnant with a second child by her father, meets a determined and highly radical teacher, we follow her on a journey of education and enlightenment as Precious learns not only how to write about her life, but how to make it her own for the first time. Sorry. Oh, this is just gonna be a reread for me. And the book is in bad shape. Sometime I'm gonna have to get a new one. I'm gonna read Twilight by Stephanie Meyer. Almost everybody knows what this one's about. I wanted the movie cover. This is a bad shape where I had it so long. <laughs> About three things I was absolutely positive. First, Edward was a vampire. Second, there was a part of him, and I didn't know how potent that part might be, that thirsted for my blood. And third, I was unconditionally and irrevo irrevocably in love with him. In the first book of the Twilight Saga, internationally best-selling author Stephanie Meyer introduces Bella Swan and Edward Cullen, a pair of spur-crossed lovers whose forbidden relationship ripens against the backdrop of a small town suspicion and a mysterious coven of vampires. This is a love story with bite. I'm going to start reading all of these again. 
And I got other all the movie cover. If everybody's wondering. I eventually will have to buy this cover again. This is like bad. I'm gonna have to fix it up a little bit more. And then I'm gonna read The Boy Next Door by um Gretchen Brennick's MSW. That little part right there. Don't know what that means. He lived in their peaceful town. He went to their church and he was killing their children. I saw him go by on his bike and I knew I was going to kill him. I just had the urge to kill him. John Dunkel, I think it's the person. Yeah. In the peaceful town of Belmont, California, everyone knew John Dunkel. What they didn't know was that he had killed before and he would kill again. He's the best liar I've ever seen, police investigator. On October 12, 12. October 2nd, 1984, the body of 12-year-old Lance Turner was found in a tunnel of scarlet poison oak only yards away from where his friends played. Someone had savagely, savagely plunged a knife into his ch chest and twisted it. A frantic police department soon suspected a local misfit named John Dunkel, but they were unable to tie him to the brutal crime until another equally gruesome murder case had surfaced. Until a young female police officer had the courage to pose as Dunkel's girlfriend and began a heroin, harrowing journey into the dark heart of a killer. Uh, includes 12 pages of shocking photos. It's hard to believe he might be danger. He might be dangerous. He's like some overgrown kid. Undercover Officer Lisa Thomas. Here is the explosive true story of the boy next door who turned into a psychologist killer and whose ability to outsmart investigators set him free to kill again. Uh, yeah, I guess you could say these are kind of shocking. And it is a kind of, because I saw one with a body in it. Oh, okay. Yeah, man, yeah, it's kind of shocking. Two of them. Two pictures. Um, I think that's all I'm planning on reading right now. I think I'm just trying to remember to think here. Yep. That's all I'm planning on reading right now. But when I actually have plan on reading more, I'll show them. Or if I get any more, I'll show you. But I'll fix that one. <laughs> um, okay, so, bye everybody. Oh wait, actually before you go, I wanted to show you this. Look, it's, one of, it's my favorite shirt. Night Living Dead, got like scenes from the movie. I don't know if I can show it, let me see. Actually, I wanted the one with the girl in the front, but this one, I like this one too. It's one of my favorite black and white horror movies. Bye, everybody.